I learned a system that's helping me organize my files, improve my workflow, track changes easily, and get paid 500,000 more for projects. One of those isn't true. Technology and tools are changing every single day, and more and more apps are launching into the App Store. AI is helping us be more productive, efficient, and we are learning every day how we can leverage changes to our advantage. So instead of being left behind, it's time to make sense of this mess we call design files. And what are the best ways for us to organize and systematically update our team and client? The lesson I've learned have taught me how to organize my own design files and they might help you as well. Before we even begin, we need to think of what is the purpose of organizing design files. First thing is that we don't really spend that much time organizing, and we should. Now, there's different levels to organization. If you're a single designer and just working with one client, it's really nice to have everything super tidy, but if you're working in a larger organization and you're just one cog in the wheel, this should be a team effort. At the end of the day, I think that the goal of organizing is truly for your engineers and stakeholders to navigate because you as the designer most likely know how to navigate this. Let's dive in Figma. So before we even begin, as you can see, I really like to have this uh, intro slide visible across me, my other like thumbnails because you can see like on the places we don't have thumbnails, it's a little bit harder to differentiate. And once you click on it, once we click on the file, let me just quickly zoom out. Once we click on the file, this is my thumbnail. So usually here I have like the last date, maybe like the status. So um, this is even better if you're a product team and you need to work on a feature. I often like typing here the last date and the task that has been worked on. So it's really helping me. So what I really find the most valuable in my files is the intro slide. My goal of an intro slide is to have all the information about the project laid out so it's easy both for the clients and for the designer that's coming in to actually navigate. So in this case, we have like a short about, a link to the website. Uh, I also include like the typeface here, just in case like the engineers like come and ask like, hey, what typeface do we use? How do I download it? I'd like to have it here. Anyone like for designers, maybe if you were using some paid typeface, it's super helpful to them to come and click and actually download. It. I also prefer to like uh, any whiteboarding, Slack, even for communication for this, or um, any documentation that we might have that's related to the project all to be listed here. And even if you're in a product organization, it's also super nice to actually have the, who are the stakeholders, who are the engineers, uh, who is the PM, uh, et cetera. Considering so that this was a, a freelance client, like I didn't have, I had one point of contact, so that's why I didn't list this here. But the other thing that's also super valuable uh, is a guide to Figma Mirror um, because this was a mobile app. So it was super nice uh, for me to come and explain to them what actually, uh, how do they mirror design? Because I get asked this a lot, like, hey, how can I see it on my phone? Um, and I just put this guide so I can just link it to them uh, and show it to them. When it comes to the intro slide, I always try to keep it first. Uh, and after that, I always, um, prefer to have like the handoff. If so, if you can see on the right hand side panel, I have it split up handoff, iterations, research, cover, and archive. I have this floating here called changelog, which I'm gonna talk a bit. Uh, basically, this is I just like to have like this arrow so it's more visual, but every dot here represents a status. So if we come here and you see green basically means completed. So I can come here to my status labels and like change it depending on what it is. But considering it's ready for development, I always keep it like this. So it's um, actually updated and we also have like what date, as you can see what date, although this is not accurate, what date and what is the flow because we might have like a, let's say a sign on flow, which is a larger part and we just split it. And sometimes what I like to do is I come here, just click this and copy link and share it this way with the client so they can come and say, oh, this is what it actually is, everything below it. The beneficial part of this is that 
you can work on one flow and it also helps you be a little bit more organized so you have the same terminology and I try to uh, rename my screens uh, following the order and this is repeated for everything so some things might be smaller like this but some things might be a little bit bigger and a little bit more complicated it would need a little bit more explaining and interaction how do we do it but I try to split it into different flows um, and also like make them logical one of the most important things when we are talking about products is the change log now we've been doing this project for six seven months now um, and there's some little details that changed after we shipped it live so for example on the 3rd of december like we decided to go with this we noticed that our people cannot go to the de detailed view of the scores so we added this button here so I mean the devs are quite familiar but like I like to label it like this big and they know like if these are approved for a dev like they can all, they can come into the change log and just see what we have changed of course if we go and change an entirety of a flow we might not have it here but we might just uh, mention it here one of the other things that I like to do is just keep iterations based on what are we doing because we are not tackling the whole app in one go, we're just uh, checking pieces and I just like to keep them um, and organize in again different flows uh, for example here we tried the leaderboard and we decided not to go with it and courses like you can see two different variations and just uh, methodically organizing them like this is a flow this is for example this flow but just an iteration of it if you're in a product team you most likely work with jira or some other kinds of tickets so what i like to do is for example say like eng1234 basically the ticket number explaining here and once this is approved i move it to like the the final design so it's much easier for uh, people to actually go and find stuff. Uh, there's even this uh, Jira plugin that you can use um, that you can actually go and uh, place it right next to your screen so it can just quickly link to a ticket so it's easy for people to understand uh, but it's extremely important for me that uh, we have it this way. And you can keep iterations as like design creates um that's basically i present the work from here and if approved or any feedback i just duplicate it and add more and then move it to the to the final to the handoff once approved um research this would contain any relevant research in this case we had like competitor research uh, and some notes with it um, and just screenshots of competitors apps or um, anything that we might found interesting you know this will vary depending on again are you in a product team that's working on a specific product environment or are you building the whole experience on your own? If you're working on a large product environment and you're just one part of it, most likely you need to have like other files for your research. But if you're not, like I prefer to do it this way because most of the mobile apps aren't that huge in terms of file size and we can fit them into a file. And again, uh, this is iOS related. Um, often. I'll just copy this and have the same thing for Android, although iOS and Android have become quite similar in recent years. And uh, as we talked with the cover, uh, I just want to display like the date when it was last week and what's the status on it. Um, and one of the most important things that I think that people neglect is actually the archive. Uh, here my goal is like every iteration, everything I've tried, uh, I just keep it here because we never know what ideas we might spar. For example, we wanted to have like something like this in the past, maybe we want to bring that up, or if I've showed it to the client, they're like, oh, I really like this, can you bring it back? Or in the beginning, we thought that we were going to have like five tabs, but we ended up having three as an MVP, and we're like, okay, let's keep it. And this was an easy way just to document everything. And this is a little bit more messy. It's not really organized, not really tidy. And that's the goal again on the research if you have uh for example if you have um research study you might create a page and just say like 12 uh 17 12 research divides 
and just paste the prototype here just what are you actually testing and it's also nice like to have some notes right next to it why you're testing it and uh, what are you actually going to test this is it how do you organize your team i think that every single design file is a little bit different so you need to find what actually works for you um, and you need to figure out what actually makes scalable for your organization now i've been this this has been a pleasure and if you like this video you might want to check this one out as well see you next week